So, I hope you forgive me, but I'm interpreting the school in the sense of a school. So I will uh, uh, continue to explain in certain things which are maybe, you might think, uh, well known, but... Uh, so, I want to explain now uh, Hobbes' theorem. So, you see, there is, uh, we have a group G, and uh, we know that uh, the homology of group with any, of G with any ring of coefficients is just the homology of a classifying space. And this just by is one of the possible definitions. Uh, this definition has an advantage that uh, since uh, the fundamental group of the classifying space is G, and you know that the homology, so it follows the homology of a space, is just the abelianization of the fundamental group. And so it follows that this is just the abelianization of G, and this is just G dividing by the commutator subgroup. So I think this is quite nice in mathematics that, uh, uh, first of all, I like to jump, but uh, there are certain theorems which are complicated with one definition or one, and very simple with another. So now if you look in a book of algebra, uh, you find the same thing for cohomology. So uh, in algebra, if you have uh, M is a G model, and now there are two functors, and there is a functor MG, which is the functor which associates to a G module the module of invariance. So the submodel, so these are the element of uh, uh, the element M in M such that G of M is M for each G. And this is sort of the kernel of identity minus G. And there is another functor which is the quotient module of covariance which is just M divided by the subgroup generated by the image of G minus I. And in books of algebra, like Jacobson, at least, uh, the derived functors of these are cohomology and homology. Now, with the classified space, we are dealing with constant coefficients. But of course, you can also deal, uh, every module gives you uh, a sheaf on this classified space. So, now what is the advantage of classified spaces? So, why topology was important? Because of the following. Um, you see, I want to explain Hobbes' theory, so I have 1 R F G. Now, uh, F is free. So, 
So, uh, the really, the classified space for F is a Bouquet circle. So, B, F is a Bouquet of surface, of circles. Now, R is a subgroup of F. Now, a subgroup corresponds to a covering space. Which is again a bouquet of circles. Okay? So, in a sense, I have that uh, these continuous maps, these homomorphies, you get uh, continuous maps of classifying spaces. And I know that BF is just EF over divided by F. You have a contractible space which has dimension 1. And, and since this is a covering space, BR is EF divided by R. And, uh, you know, there is this theorem of uh, Magnus, or Niz Magnus, I think, that, anyhow, this is a covering space. A covering space of a bouquet of circles is something of dimension 1, and so you find that R is also free. So this is a, it's a theorem of algebra which becomes very easy when you use topology and the theory of covering spaces. A subgroup of a free group is a free group. Now, uh, there is only one simple idea. I didn't look at Hope's paper, but this idea is very simple, must be the same, is that this classified space is not unique. It is only uh, unique up to homotopy, and so now we change. The idea is, uh, is to change B prime F. So now we change to another classifying space, and we do the following. So I just take here E G, B G is uh, E G over G. So I get this BG. So associated to this homomorphism, now I get, uh, I take now EF times EG. So EF and EG, they are both contractible, so their product is again contractible. Now F X on here, but it also X on here because f maps to g and g maps on uh, f maps to g and g x on e g and then you make it uh, act on the product in a suitable way on the right and the left so that they cancel but there is a nice action by f but now you see this is a product so now uh, we get here that E B R, so this is the new B F new, and then B R is just E F divided by R. Good. Okay, so now you see sorry. B R is E F over R. No, I in this case E F is equal to E R because since uh, B R is a covering space, uh, it's the universal covering of B F. You see, E F is the universal covering of B F. 
Now, this is a covering space, so it's the same universal covering divided by R. Okay? So this is a simple, simple remark, but it's very useful. Because now, this is, uh, is a fiber bundle. And this is the fiber. And the fiber, well, EF has dimension 1. So you see that now this, this realization, now I have, uh, now what I have, I want to calculate the second homology of this fiber bundle. And here comes the topology, so I use the spectral sequence for homology for fiber bundles And the remark that the first homology is just the classification gives that the second homology of G with coefficients of Z, which is of course, this is H2 of uh, BG, um, yeah, H2 of BG, These maps to the first homology in the first homology of R, I take the covariance by F and this goes to F to the first homology of BF and this goes to the first homology of G. So from this exact sequence, from this fiber, fiber bundle, I take here the first homology And then, at a certain moment, I have to take the, homolo the first homology of the fiber, but where I use the transgression, and the, uh, the kernel of the transgression is, you see, you have these, these cycles here, you take them around, and if they come back to themselves, okay, this operation of transgressions then defines the second homology of G. Okay, so this is... Uh, how you understand. So, uh, to prove, so in general you have this, uh, a, it's easy with algebra to calculate the first homology, the abelianization, the first cohomology is home GR and so on and. Okay, so this is something which is uh, somehow I find, excuse me? F? Yeah, okay. So I said it quickly. This is this definition of covariance. F, since R is a normal subgroup, since uh, R is a normal subgroup, F acts on R by conjugation, and so R modulo, then the abelianization of R becomes an F module. Okay. okay, so now I explained some elementary topology, but quite interesting. Now I pass to the next question, which is uh, examples where 
of k pi ones and moduli. So my time is becoming less. There's nothing to do to fight against time. So what I will do, I want to explain uh, now uh, one example. So how we use somehow uh, topology. Let me give you two examples. And one is a theorem which is well known, but it's a very simple theorem which encodes many important ideas. And is the following, X is a, see there are difficult theorems and easy theorems, and sometimes if you want to do mathematics you must also know the easy theorems. This helps also if there are people, apply people who ask you questions. So X is an abelian, uh, is a compact let X be a compact Keller manifold. Then X is a complex torus if and only if the integral cohomology algebra of Z is the exterior algebra uh, over the first cohomology group. In particular, if and only if X is homotopically equivalent to a complex torus of same dimension. Okay, so now uh, the proof is very simple. Uh, I know that X is a compact Keller manifold, so uh, you know that uh, H1 X C is H10 plus H01 and uh, I know since uh, n is the dimension of x uh, and h2n xz is isomorphic to z Okay, the important thing is that it's an oriented manifold okay, of real dimension 2n, so it has a fundamental class. So this cohomology uh, is z and h2n plus i is 0 for i at least 1. Okay, so this algebra leaves in dimension from 0 to 2n and then it's 0. Now it is an exterior algebra and it follows that the rank of h1 x z is therefore equal to 2n. So it follows that the number of holomorphic one forms is equal to n. This implies that uh, the Albanese map alpha from x to h naught omega 1 x dual modulo first homology divided by torsion has as image
has uh, so alpha from x to a which is the Albanese of x has a dimension of a equal n equal dimension of x And this mapping here, this induces an isomorphism of cohomology algebras. So this implies so. Uh, the degree of the map, so you see, I know now that uh, alpha star, so H2n alpha goes from uh, H2n Az goes to H2n Xz is an isomorphism. But this means, if you know the theory of the degree of a map, that the map has degree 1. And so alpha is surjective. So I want to prove that alpha is an isomorphism. So I get x goes to a and is of degree 1. So it's sufficient to show that it's finite. Because if it's finite of degree 1, then it's a normalization. But the normalization of A, A is smooth, so it's normal, and so this implies that X is isomorphic to A, which is what we want to prove. So I need to show that uh, this is finite. So assume it's not finite. And let V be a, a submanifold, a complex submanifold of subvariety such that alpha of V is a point. So uh, then this implies that alpha lower star of V uh, Cupped with the cohomology of A is zero. I take this fiber, it maps to a point, so when I cap it with the cohomology classes in the image, I get zero. Well, what do you mean by alpha lower star? Alpha lower star is the image in homology. So uh, I wanted to save, I mean, I can write it. A complex a variety of dimension k, and this is h2k of alpha of v capped with 2n minus 2k is 0. OK? Aha. Uh -huh. But you see, we have an isomorphism. So uh, this is just the same as h to n minus 2k. x, z is 0. And by Poincare duality, this implies uh, 
pancreas duality implies that the class of V in H two K X Z is zero. But this is a contradiction because we are on a compact Keller manifold. If you have a Keller manifold and you have a variety of dimension k, you integrate the k exterior power of the Keller form and this is positive. So you see this is, uh, I like this theorem because, and there are similar theorems which I proved many years ago and they're very elementary. So, but somehow you can they can be extended a lot because really what we are using is elementary facts that uh, uh, essentially <laughs> the degree theory of the degree and uh, and this idea and then you can vastly generalize okay so this was one example for the second example uh, I want to, uh, let me give you some um, yeah so now we enter into some results which let go under the name of existence of holomorphic maps. So as I said in the beginning, the great advantage of classifying spaces uh, is that from homomorphism of groups we, cr we produce continuous maps. Then I said, okay, if everything is good we can produce a differentiable maps and of course we want a holomorphic map. This doesn't work always. But I want to give some instance and the first theorem is the following. Again, X is a compact Keller manifold, this is needed, and F from X to C a vibration um, onto a curve of genus B. with multiple fibers of multiplicities M1, MD you see that there is some analogy with uh, the covering, yeah? we have this multiplicity in these points then this gives an exact sequence uh, the fundamental group of the fiber goes to the fundamental group of X and this subjects onto the orbifold fundamental group pi B D M1 MD which I will write simply as the orbifold fundamental group of the vibration. So this is a theorem which I've been using in my joint work with uh, John He Kum and Keijo Gizo and it's quite useful. And uh, we say that it is now conversely uh, any surjection psi of hyperbolic type so the hyperbolic type is something which like in Hurwitz formula says that the genus uh, of the covering is possible so 2b minus 2 plus the sum of 1 minus 1 over mi which is the 
to this orbifold group you correspond the covering, this should be positive. Uh, Conversely, subjection of a hyperbolic type. So if the type is hyperbolic, uh, correspond bijectively to uh, so subjections of hyperbolic type and kernel of psi finitely generated so they correspond bijectively to such vibrations so because F, the fiber F is a compact, the general fiber F is a compact Keller manifold and the compact manifold has fundamental group which is finitely generated. So we see that such a vibration gives a kernel which is finitely generated and conversely such a subjection is is giving you a map a holomorphic map so this is used uh, so how is this used so I don't want to be too general so let me just give the easiest examples which are surfaces isogenous to a product uh, somehow I'm repeating always the easiest examples, but that's life, right? So, I mean, it's easier to complicate the things once you've understood the first example. So, the example... No, I'm not assuming. I'm just saying that... So, for example, I might have some fiber which is entirely of Moth 52 and Moth 53. No, this is in my is in the classical Kodaira sense. I mean that the fiber is really M J times a divisor. Yes, but the other singular fibers can be arbitrary. Yeah, I'm just saying uh, that the, mul the the multiple fibers have these multiplicities. Okay, so this is important because in fact, if uh, in general, uh, if you have a vibration with uh, multiple fibers and you just map to the fundamental group of the curve, the kernel is not finitely generated. Okay? That's why you have to do that. But, I mean, these are really multiple fibers in the sense that Fj is Mj times Fj prime, and this is not divisible. Okay? And no other fibers are multiple. And no other fibers are multiple. Exactly. So the examples are surfaces isogenous to a product. Of curves, of genus, of genera G1 and G2, at least one. So this is something I described in one of the first two lectures. So I have, and I assume that G is contained in the automorphism group of C1, and G is contained in the automorphism group of C2, and I take S, C1 divided, times C2 divided by G, which is diagonally embedded in G times G. And I assume that G acts freely. Isogenous means 
that GX freely. So we have a fun then the in this case we have the exact sequence pi G1. So the fundament C1 times C2 is a covering of S. So I have pi G1 times pi G2, which is the fundamental group of this. And it's a covering space of S, so I get a subgroup of S, and the quotient is G. And these two are normal subgroups. Okay. And the Euler number of S is for G1 minus 1, G2 minus 1. This is the Euler number of the product divided by the cardinality of G. Now the theorem says, theorem says that if the fundamental group of S prime is isomorphic to the fundamental group of S and the Euler number of S prime is equal to the Euler number of S then again um, S prime is also C prime times C2 divided by G is also exogenous to the product and the corresponding locus in the moduli space is given by one, two, or four connected components. So let me explain the theorem. Well, okay, improving the theorem, let me save some time. So the fundamental group of S prime is the same of S, so I can put here an S prime. So S prime is a covering with pi 1 of S hat sorry and so this implies now this this rejection here both surjection has a kernel which is finitely generated. So by the theorem, there exists a mapping of S hat onto two curves. So let me put it like this. The, for each j, there exists a map in here corresponding to the subjection of fundamental group of S hat to pi gj. So I get two holomorphic maps to curves and then I get S hat goes to C prime 1 times C prime 2. 
Okay, and now, and here it's, you use some inequality for the Zeutensege inequality. So this is something I don't explain. So this is like a volume calculation that it is an isomorphism. Okay, now uh, I have the GX on C prime 1 and I would like to prove that the topological type is the same as the one on C1. I use that this subset of Tachmuller space is connected. If I fix the topological type, all the curves with a fixed topological type, they, are, they belong to a connected family. Okay, and here we are almost done, but there is a problem. So, how do we get this action? It's very simple. Now, uh, if you divide here by pi g2, so you take this exact sequence and then divide by pi g2. What do I get? Well, if I divide, now dividing by pi g2, I get the fundamental group of g1 goes to the orbifold fundamental group for uh, c prime 1 and g, this goes to g. So you see that the orbifold exact sequence is the same. And so, in my first proof, I made a mistake and says the, orb the topological type is the same. But I forgot <sighs> this is the action. But now, you see, there is something that the mapping class group uh, is our orientation preserving. Okay? Now, who tells you that the action on, that this action has the, preserves the same orientation? This isomorphism of this fundamental group with the fundamental group of C prime 1 could be orientation reversing. So, to get the same topological action might need reversing the orientation. of C prime J. So I reverse one, I reverse twice, and that's why there are at most four possibilities. Okay. So, uh, so this is one theorem, and uh, there is another important theorem which was done before uh, by CEO concerning uh, holomorphic mappings to uh, locally symmetric manifolds, okay? So, but I should skip this because I want to come at least to the definition. So, uh, section five, I promise to say what is an Inouye type manifold, okay? So, um, So to understand, so I want to describe what is an Inouye type manifold.
But bef well, I gave already an example. The first day I gave this surface with the PG equal Q equal 1 and K square 6. So re recall example 1 or whatever. Uh, you have S, which is a divisor, in X, which is the Bagnera de Franchi's threefold. And this Bagnera de Franchi's threefold was just A1 times A2 divided by Z mod 2 squared. So I can write S so the main point is that by Lefschetz's theorem the fundamental group of S is isomorphic to the fundamental group of X and so it follows that S is equal to S hat divided by Z mod 2 squared where S hat is an ample divisor in A1 times A2 and, and if you remember it was of type 2 respectively 1 2 Okay, so essentially what we can do, we can, um, so we have an ample divisor, so we, the, the general definition is as follows. There is a, there is a small change that here, uh, this group was acting freely here. Now we change a little bit and we just impose that this group acts freely on its head. And this will be the definition. So, uh, so there is a first general definition, maybe too general, but to give an idea is the following. So, X is an Inoue type manifold if and only if X is has an is equal to X is an etal quotient So G X freely and X hat is an ample divisor in Z which is a projective manifold which is a k pi one, a k gamma one. So this is quite general, except well, which are the projective manifolds which are k gamma one? This is not known. So to be more concrete. We say that X is special if Z is just a product of a billion variety times a product of curves times a product of locally symmetric manifolds.
So this means it's a bounded domain divided by some group uh, gamma j. Okay, so uh, there are some technical conditions which I think you know I can I will skip now. The, the, they are rather complicated. I don't have time. And if you want to talk to me, I will be in my office in Kias, so you're welcome to ask for more. So I think at this point I would like just to sketch. So there have been, uh, these are called Inoue type varieties because Inoue gave a different construction of some surfaces constructed by Bernier. Later on, and it, I discovered that they had to understand their moduli space, I realized that they were fitting in this picture where there was an elliptic curve and uh, or two elliptic curves and a curve of hyogenous and uh, these allow to show that each uh, surface homotopically equivalent to that was in this family so it is possible to describe the whole moduli space by saying that something is homotopically equivalent to such a variety. Or you can be more precise, but this will take a long time. So the main idea, and I should say that the theory is not complete. We have some theorems, but still uh, they can be improved. And so it's also a good point not to enter into detail. But the main idea is that um, if x is projective so if x uh, so if y is projective and y is homotopically equivalent to x which is a special in ue type manifold then y is also But we need some technical assumption. So, at least one idea, at least the line of argument I can sketch. If Y is homotopically equivalent to X, then the fundamental group of Y, then is maps to G and it has the kernel, so pi 1 of Y so first of all there exists a covering an etal covering Y hat such that we have this exact sequence and this is just a fundamental group of X hats. As we mentioned, X hat is an ample divisor. Um, it's an ample divisor in Z, so this fundamental group here is the fundamental group of Z by the theorem of Lefschetz. Z is a product, so this is the product of the fundamental group of these abelian varieties times the product of the fundamental group of the curves times the fundamental group of this mj which are okay but now
Now, the fundamental group of y hat has all these surjections. So, the sur these surjections, as in the case I explained before, yield a map of y hat into a product of other abelian varieties, a product of other curves, and a product of other m prime j, even if here by rigidity this is either mj or the complex conjugate. So we get another z prime. And so now you see why I need some technical assumption. The technical assumption then to show one thing that uh, this is an embedding. And as in the case of surfaces isogenous to her to show that the action of G on say A prime J and AJ belong to the same family. And similarly, for the actions G acting on CI and G acting on C prime I. So, on the other hand, I already explained the ideas. You see, in my examples, I tried to explain how the action on an abelian variety is completely determined by the orbifold fundamental group. The same for curves and the same here. So, with some technical hypothesis, this can be done. Now, what is difficult is that we are talking about a variety and we are talking about an action of the group. But the difficult part is that this divisor y hat will have the same numerical type as y. And what is difficult is to show that it's algebraically equivalent to that. And this is somehow the part of the story which makes somehow, well, we don't get a very general theorem because there are objective difficulties and that's why the method is good I think it's interesting, it can be applied in many cases, but there is a lot of work using representation theory, and this is exactly the point why in the beginning I explained that there was this point about the Stone von Neumann representation, this tensor product, so there are delicate arguments which have to be used. And let me take the last minute, which I have, the chairman allows me <laughs> I would like really to thank the audience for being with me and especially the organizers for arranging the set of lectures which have been even if I missed the beginning lectures but I got a feeling it shows that uh, algebra and geometry is a very vast subject where you can you need to know a lot and you can do it and tell it in quite a different way and according to the taste. So I would like that we all thank the organizers for their work. <laughs>